<clears throat> that brings us to our item number 12, which is public participation. And I will tell you that the board welcomes and encourages public participation. We respectfully ask that you adhere to the procedures and decorum provided in board policy BEDH public participation at meetings. Your comments will be limited to three minutes. Dr. Harris is on the front of you. He'll give you a time card when you're nearing certain points in your conversation. And questions asked during public participation will be handled in accordance with board policy BEDH. And with that, we have two people that signed up for public participation. And the first one to speak will be Mr. Michael Whitehurst. Mr. Whitehurst. Hey, good evening. Big thumbs up on the lead uh, P5. I love that. So um, tonight I wanted to talk about behavioral contracts. And you know, when I, when I talk to teachers and I talk to coaches, administrative personnel, and I look at myself as a parent, one thing that I know is a couple things in the research I've done is, you know, a teacher, um, a principal, whatever, you know, I wish that we could pay these folks six figures and beyond, okay? But the biggest thing that I talk to them about a lot of times is helping create an environment for successful learning and giving them the tools to be successful in that environment. And one thing that I've noticed, and we've had this happen in Chapin recently, um, and we've seen this more and more nationally at the state level, et cetera, and that is we need to continue to give our teachers, our coaches, et cetera, the tools that they need to keep behavior from an honor code standpoint, from a behavioral code standpoint, as we're trying to develop our young people, you know, to be better adults, better citizens. And one of those, one of those tools is a behavioral contract. And I know we have honor codes in our schools I know that a lot of our uh, teams have behavioral contracts, but I would ask you as a board and administration to continue to look at those contracts to make sure that they have the teeth in them so that we as parents or whatever, if something doesn't go our way, come to a coach or a, you know, someone and say, hey, we need to overturn this and my kid needs to be given something even if that kid is in the wrong. Now, I have a personal example of that. So my, my son was a successful soccer player on the national level, college athlete. He signed a behavioral contract to Chapin High his junior year. Now, he didn't break, you, you guys are gonna be talking about drug and alcohol tonight and those type of things, and those things are permeating our schools, unfortunately. He was just a bad teammate. <laughs> and he thought he was above the team. And the bottom line is this junior year, I sat him down for a number of games, but I needed the help of that coach in that behavioral contract, and that coach sat him down for the rest of the season. So I just want to tell you that you have a number of parents out there that feel like I do. I know there's a number of us parents out there that want to do everything we can for our kid, you know, in, in every situation, but I do want you to please make sure that we're still holding the line and giving our teachers, our staff, our administrators, et cetera, that air cover that they need to have successful teaching, coaching, et cetera, environments. So that's all I had to say tonight. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Whitehurst. Our next speaker is Julie, Ms. Julie Booth. Ms. Booth. Dr. Melton and the Board of Trustees. Rather than make a statement this evening, I would like to present you with a number of questions that the public has regarding recent developments during regular and special called board meetings. I understand it's your policy not to answer questions posed by the taxpayers in a public forum. However, in the spirit of transparency, I would urge you to consider addressing these issues in a regular meeting. Mr. Gant, may I interrupt and hold the uh, participants' time? I, I just need to be clear if I heard you say that our policy is not to answer questions during the public I, I, I didn't I didn't hear what she said I wanted to, to have that restated please I understand it is your policy not to answer questions posed by the taxpayers in a public forum you wouldn't answer them in a public for the forum is that correct not, not necessarily but go ahead 
However, in the spirit of transparency, I would urge you to consider addressing these issues in a regular meeting so all of the public could be made aware. If that is not possible, I would appreciate answers in a timely manner that I can pass along to the public. Number one, it is rumored that you are looking for land for new elementary and middle schools in Chapin, primarily through a land swap. I asked Dr. Harris about this and he says there are no plans. However, I have information from attendees at the recent legislative breakfast that those plans were discussed. Number two, when are you planning on placing a referendum on the ballot to address the issues uncovered in the MBCON facilities study? Number three, will you do a formal enrollment study prior to discussions on the MBCON facility study recommendations as uh, asked by Ms. Hammond? Who was on the committee who chose MBCON to do the facility study? And how much did that study cost? What are the rules that govern school board trustees being entertained while on retreat by firms that the district is currently in negotiation with? Number six, as Trustee White said when the 2008 referendum was on the ballot, the biggest waste of money is to wait. Probably shouldn't have waited on the Derrick Pond Road School, so what do you plan to do with that property now? Will you sell it or will you build on it? Number seven, what are the plans for the unutilized property that the district owns on Westcott Road, Fork Avenue, and the location of the former Alternative Academy in Chapin? Number eight, and the last question, and this is sort of a minor thing compared to everything else, but I've asked about this before. Can you provide the plans for what will be done with the gravel parking lot at Chapin High School? I've spoken with each of you through email about this several years back. And when I spoke with Dr. Ross when he was there, he mentioned it was being converted to practice athletic fields, thus the reason for not paving it. Neither athletic fields nor paving has happened. It is nothing but potholes and mud. Students who park there are required to pay the same parking fee as other students, but yet their parking lot is not maintained. Mr. Carlin has told me in the past that this gravel lot is not in the rotation for parking lot maintenance. And that concludes the questions. I'll give them. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Booth. And that concludes our public participation and will take us to item number 13, which is action as required as necessary or appropriate on matters discussed in executive session. We had